So over the last few days, there have been some whispers about a new generative AI music platform that is better than Suno. Naturally, I decided to pop on my detective's hat and see what it was all about. And I think I've collected pretty much everything there is to know about this new challenger to the throne. Not only will we hear what it sounds like, but who it is. And as a bonus, I've got a brief chat with like a legit rock star and professional musician about AI. Okay, let's dive in. First off, I do have to say that some of this story takes place in the shadows. I tried to do as much like legitimate reporting as I could, like in my Sora deep dive recently. But due to the nature of NDAs, obviously some people are just going to be referred to as sources. I, on the other hand, can talk about this because no one asked me to sign an NDA. So this whole thing kicked off via a tweet from McKay Wrigley who said, just got a demo of an AI music product that's two times better than Suno. Most floored I've been since Sora demos. The model is absolutely wild. AI music will soon take the world by storm. Riza Sayer then responded with probably what all of us were thinking, so what's the point of this tweet then? At that point, like a pirate ship made out of Rice Krispie treats, the leaks started coming. A few days after McKay's original tweet, Max posted, I got access to an upcoming AI music app and am mind blown by the outputs. It's like Sora, but for music. Jimmy Apples also responded to McKay's original tweet stating, if it's the one I'm thinking of, then yes, it made Suna V3 sound meh in comparison. No small feat. Now you'll note up to this point, there is no mention of who this mysterious Suno competitor is, nor have we actually heard anything. But here's where things get interesting. Because Mumbai uncovered a now deleted post by XG Project featuring an AI generated song with a animated video background that we have not seen yet. The song generated is very much like golden age of hip hop. Mumbai refers to it as Tupac. To my ears, it sounds a little more like Tribe Called Quest, but let's take a listen. You let me know who you hear. In the world of data, where the details glow, there's a force that rises and strength to show. Through roads and columns, it weaves its quest, and algorithms stand tall above the rest. XG boost, they call it, with power so vast in the race of machines, it's unsurpassed. Drive the gradient soaring high, XG moves banner across the sky, boots through trees in a dance so bold, finding paths through the data to fold. In precision, embrace we trust, the mighty whisper of XG boost. Got another leak sample coming up in just a minute, but for now, let's dig into this one. First off, the song is very good. I'm not hearing any weird artifacting. There's a little bit of flanging on the hi-hats at the very beginning, but that was actually something that was fairly common in tracks of that era. The song does stay in key and isn't like randomly transposing itself. Although to be fair, that was more of a pseudo like V1 and V2 issue. And in terms of instrumentation, rhyme and flow, the fact that it has two MCs, everything does sound really, really good. There's also that sly guitar hook, which is definitely something that you heard in 90s alternative hip hop. Additionally, we can see here that it is generating in stereo, which you know qualifies at least to some degree the claim that it is two times better than Suno. In terms of overall fidelity, it's kind of hard to tell. We're listening to something that was screen recorded, uploaded to Twitter, compressed, and now uh, recompressed as I present it to you on YouTube. I can tell you that loading it up into an EQ, there is like this really hard sloping cut uh, somewhere around like 12K. That probably is the Twitter compression. Similarly with the track that we'll be hearing shortly, again, we also are getting that hard cutoff around 12K. So I think that this is definitely more of a compression issue than the model. Backing that up with one anonymous source, the sound quality is a lot better on platform and via another anonymous source, the sound sample that we just heard isn't even quote one of the good ones. Now for the fun part, who is this? Well, Swisher Fever was able to suss out that the platform's name is Udio. Now, I don't know if they're dropping the A in audio or the ST in studio, but if it is Udio as in studio, then that's awesome because it totally reminds me of the classic Delirium sequence from Coffee and Cigarettes. This was a 2003 film by Jim Jarmusch, kind of a slice of life thing, but the Delirium sequence was Rizza, Jizza, and Bill Murray hanging out and, you know, drinking a bunch of coffee and herbal tea. It's wonderful, and if you haven't seen it, it's linked below. In terms of confirmation that it is Udio, we do notice that there is this kind of like triangle corner, which does appear also in the video generations. To further confirm, Legit Rumors went and looked at the web code of Udio and discovered uh, the options that we will eventually have here. Obviously, you will be able to create a song via a prompt. Under Artist Styles, it is noted that we do not generate songs using artists' voice, but you can use artist styles to describe music, and we will replace the artist 
artist reference with relevant genre tags. This is similar to Suno in that you can't prompt specifically for an artist name, but you can prompt for keywords that are relatively associated with that artist and get something that kind of sounds in the ballpark. We'll obviously be able to write lyrics and have descriptors like chorus, hook, verse. Uh, it cuts off there. We may have other options. Remix, which will allow you to create new tracks inspired by songs you like or create variations to tracks that you or others have created. Now, an important note here is that I do not think that you will be able to audio reference with this as you can with stable audio too. Like you're not gonna be able to upload an MP3 of a pre-existing track and have it spit out something that sounds like that track. Additionally, Legit posted up a second sample, this one from an anonymous source, kind of more in a soul vibe and a much longer generation. Uh, the vocals on this kind of blew me away. Let's take a listen. Guess it's time to switch that AI ride. Gotta face the music, can't dwell on the past. Building up the rhythm, gonna make it last. Alex, oh, we had our time. But I'm moving on, I'm gonna find my prime. I can't believe they nerfed the pseudo. No, no. subscribe to Lady Space Heart So that is pretty impressive. The vocals do sound very well balanced and mixed in. Uh, occasionally with Suno, I always get the feeling that there's sort of a track underneath it and then vocals layered on top. This feels very much baked in. Additionally, in that drum fill, drum solo section, when you zoom in on the waveform, you can see that the left and right channels are definitely doing something different. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 independent stereo tracks. So obviously Udio is in like super closed beta. I had to go digging to even find out who they were, but it does appear that if you go to the website now, you can actually sign up for the waitlist. As a bit of a tag to all this, generative AI has obviously been a bit of a controversial subject in the artist realm, but in my opinion, the group that seems least fearful of it and most adaptive are musicians. To that, I thought I'd share a quick clip from a chat that I had with Jordan Rudis, the virtuo musician from the band Dream Theater. If you aren't familiar with Jordan's work or aren't a fan of prog rock, which I totally understand, it's the nerdiest of all rocks, uh, you might want to check out a really cool video that he recently did with a piano in which he ends up writing the piano track to uh, Jay-Z and Alicia Keys' Empire State of Mind without ever having heard the track. Anyhow, here's a take on AI by a professional musician who has played everywhere from like Madison Square Garden to the Buddha. So clearly you are, you do not fear AI and not at all. I actually think that it's my help for, you know, thinking in it is that I'm using it personally. Everything I do with visually and musically is to enhance who I am. I mean, a, an example going way back is when we on 8-bit computers and I got my first DAW. Oh, okay. And I was playing and I discovered quantizing and even the fact that you could play something on a MIDI keyboard and it'll speed it up. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it would then, oh, they turned it with a line line. Now, that's amazing. But my first instinct was, how, let me learn how to play. Let me learn how to play it. I tried to make that sound with my fingers because I wanted to feel uh -huh. what it was like to have the experience of making that kind of sound with that kind of headspace. Mm -hmm. It was opening up a new channel for me. I never mm -hmm. thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. So for me, the technology is all about opening up those other pathways. The things you wouldn't have thought about. For sure. And then to bring them into my own being to become you know, that much uh, more expressive work technical myself, maybe a little wiser, or you just have an, op an opening. But yeah. yeah. 
I'll keep you updated on what's going on with Udio. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.